Hello and welcome to another tutorial video of KeyStage. So this tutorial is about MP devices and how I can actually route MP signals from my uh, Seaboard block to different types of synthesizer which are either natively MP compatible or not MP compatible but multi timbre instruments or mono timbre instruments. So let me first talk about what MP is. MP stands for MIDI Polyphonic Expression. So I'm not going to talk about all the details of MP, but vaguely what it does, what it is, is the following. So when I play a note on my C board, three additional signals are actually sent to the connected device. So the first signal is called uh, the slide signal, which is basically controlled by this vertical position on, on my C board, and which is by default control change signal uh, 74, which is the brightness signal. And the horizontal movement uh, controls the pitch band of, of the notes. And the pressure is the channel pressure signal. So along with every note that I play on the C board, three additional signals, which I call MP signals, are sent automatically. In addition to that, every additional note that I play on a C board are sent to different channels on the connected device. So each of them are controlled on different channels, which allows me to control the pressure, the brightness, and the pitch band of each note separately. That's why we call it polyphonic expression. So before I start, I need to configure my C board to, to be able to work the key stage. Okay, so I connected my C board to Rolly dashboard, which allows me to configure my C board. So the first thing that I, uh, you should do is turn this to multi-channel. And this is mainly because uh, the MP mode doesn't allow you to choose the range of your channels. And you need to be able to choose the range of your channels uh, in order to prevent direct connections with your C board with the synthesizers in your iPad. So this, is, this starts from 11 to 16. Well, it, it really depends on how you, it, it really depends on your C board because since I'm using a C board plug, I, you know, five notes, five not polyphony is enough. I won't be using both of my hands most of the time. So that's why I started this number from 11 to 16. So you should make sure that this range does not intersect, does not contain any of the input channels of your synthesizers. Or if it contains, you should ju just make sure that the C board is not selected as one of the input devices. So I I'll come to that when I start loading the synthesizers. So the pitch band range, you try to choose this as maximum as possible. So since my Seaboard block is just two octaves, I just choose the highest possible range, which is 24 semitones. Uh, this, is, this is just up to you, the octave, the or and also the transpose. Uh, you should always choose 74 as your slight CC control change number because that's how key stage is configured. The slide mode should be absolute because uh, this relative controls can be actually done from within key stage. And these tracking modes, uh, they are not really important and these are just up to you. These, So the most important thing is that you choose multi-channel and choose your start and, and mid ranges such so that you don't have direct connections. Okay, now let's connect our Seaboard to our iPad. So I'm using this free program called XKey. This is actually a program that allows you to connect your uh, Bluetooth XKey Air to your iPad, but it actually works uh, for any Bluetooth device. So I can see that C board here. So it's connected. Now I'm gonna use three different synthesizers, three, three apps to demonstrate MP routing with key stage. Uh, so I make sure that my key stage is not open. So the first instrument is the Synthmaster player. So this is an MP compatible instrument. So when I play my C board, I can, it's, I can see that it's directly connected to Synthmaster. And I don't want that. I just want to, uh, to roll all the signals through key stage. So I look at the MIDI con controls. Now the problem with Synthmaster is that you cannot really choose the MIDI range when it comes to MP. So I, I see that MP is enabled here but it doesn't allow me to choose a range of channels. Uh, I can either choose all channels or a single channel. But fortunately, it allows me to choose the MIDI inputs. So I ch just choose network connection, which is not connected to anything. 
So this basically cuts the direct connection between my Seaboard and Sinmaster player. Okay, the next app is Sunriser. Uh, this is a mono timbrel instrument. It's not MP compatible. So I make sure that the background mode is on. And when I look at the MIDI channel, it's MIDI channel 2, and my Seaboard sends channels from 11 to 16, so I don't have any direct connection, I'm good to go. So when I play my Seaboard, I don't hear anything from Sunriser as well. And the last app that I'm going to use is this Roland Sound Canvas. So this is a multi tremolo instrument with 16 channels. And now I can see that it's directly connected, and now you can see the channels. So Seaboard sends signals from 11 to 16. So let's go into the menu of Roland and see what kind of setups I can do with this. So I click Core MIDI and here is my MIDI input port. So I again choose Network, which is not connected to anything. So therefore my Seaboard does not con communicate with Sound Canvas directly. So now I can open Key Stage. Okay, I'll start with Synthmaster Player, which is MP compatible. I choose my Seaboard here. Okay, so this is actually a good example of something that you should be careful about. So now, even if I made all my connections and make sure that my Seaboard does not communicate with any of the devices, now I can hear something. I can hear the notes, even if my output is not there. This is because when I open key stage, the virtual port of key stage basically entered into the system of iPad, the core MIDI of iPad, which basically changed this back to Omni. So every time you start up a new app, its MIDI connection gets into the system, this basically resets. And some apps does that, so you have to make sure that you just open all your apps and then, then just check this MIDI connection. And sometimes Synthmaster player also does the same thing. So even if it shows network connection here, sometimes when you open a new app, this just turns into all sources and then it automatically starts this direct connection. So you just make sure that you have none of the connections here. Okay. So I have my Seaboard and I'm gonna choose Synthmaster player. So when you are using Seaboard or any MP instrument, uh, you should always turn this MP on. This is one thing. And so these channels, you can choose multiple channels. So Synthmaster Player accepts signals from all channels, so I simply choose all channels. Now I want to demonstrate something. If this MP is off, what happens here is when I play a note, it ba th that note is sent to all 16 channels of Synthmaster Player. So basically, a 16 copy of this note is played on Synthmaster right now. This is definitely something that we don't want. But when I turn MP on, the MP routing is enabled, so every note that I play is routed to a single channel out of these 16 channels. So how Keystage works is, is the following. The first note that comes from Seaboard for example, it's from channel 11, is routed to the first available channel of this on this output channel, which is channel 1. And the second note is, direct, is routed to the second available channel. So now th any additional cha note is ch sent to different channels. So So now MP is now working just as it's ex expected. So this is a native MP instrument. So we don't have to do m many configurations. But I want to click on this advanced tab and just make sure about one thing. There is this master output channels section. So there are a couple of choices here. I can choose all channels. I can s choose selected output channels, which is all channels in this case. Or I can choose any of the channels here. This selection really depends on the instrument uh, that you're using. For Synthmaster Player, we don't have a configuration of that, but from experimentation, I know that the Synthmaster Player's master input channel is channel one. Okay, what is master output channel? So Synthmaster is a MP compatible instrument. It accepts MP signals, but it also accepts other signals like the volume signal the you know, and some other parameters as well. 
So the thing is, all these other parameters, non-MP parameters, are routed to master channel, and they are not node dependent. So these global parameters basically control all the nodes simultaneously. So the volume. <laughs> This volume basically controls all the nodes. It's, it's not MP independent. Okay, now let's move on to Sunriser, our monotimbral instrument. So I choose my seaboard here and I choose Sunriser, and now that it's channel two. Okay. Let's choose another instrument here. Okay, so without any configuration, sound, it looks like it's working, but well, let me actually show you what happens when this MP uh, switch is off. So as you know, the, the slide parameter, the, the vertical parameter sends uh, control change 74. And on Sunriser, I configured it in such a way that the slide parameter controls the effect depth the amount the effect amount on on sunriser but if i play two notes you see that the, the effect depth basically alternates between the two vertical positions of my notes and if i play three notes it basically starts altering between the three notes but if i turn my mp switch on Now I don't have that discontinuity on on the chorus. What happens is the following. So there are these tracking modes. You, you might have recognized these tracking modes uh, from the Rolly dashboard. They also have tracking modes that you can configure for a seaboard. Uh, but the thing is, so my channel is a single channel note, uh, channel two. All the notes together with all these parameters are routed to that single channel. And these tracking modes allows you to basically combine the different parameters on different notes um, to, a, to, a, to a single parameter. So for the slide value, I cho chose the highest value, which means that if I play three notes, the highest value of my slide parameter is sent to to Sunriser and that the lower two values are neglected but I can also choose different options like the average value for example so so the average value basically sends the average of all my notes so if I if I increase so you can see that the, the average of these two vertical positions are sent so these tracking modes are especially useful when you're using a mono trimble instrument like the Sunriser. And the same also works for pressure modes and glide modes. So after I demonstrate with all types of synthesizers, I'm gonna talk about how I can actually map these dimensions, the three dimensions to different parameters on each instrument. Now on a mono trimble instrument, you can't really use the full potential of MP, of course, because you have only one channel available. You cannot really, you know, have independent control over notes, but you can still use the gestures of your seaboard, like, you know, the you know, horizontal position. Now when it comes to the pitch band, you can see that it's not really working the way it's supposed to work. When I, when I, pitch one octave up, it just pitches uh, a tritone up. So how can I fix that? So one way is to actually change the, adjust the pitch range of your seaboard to work with the Sunriser. So if I go into Sunriser, I can see that my pitch range is the maximum pitch range, which is 12 semitones, which cannot go beyond 12 semitones on Sunriser. But I don't want to adjust my seaboard's pitch range to five semitones because I may actually want use it with some other synthesizer which supports 24 semitones. So to actually adjust that, I'm going to add a custom translator, which converts pitch bands to pitch bands. So remember from the custom translator's tutorial, the pitch range in key stage is chosen from a minus 48 to 48. 
48, meaning the full pitch range. So, the applied translator to range is the incoming range coming from my seaboard. So what I need to do is, I want to adjust this range from minus 24 to 24. So when I s slide for 12 semitones here, it sends the full pitch range, which corresponds to 12, 12 semitones on my si sound riser. So, so now it works. So you just have to do a, a little math to configure all these. And what I usually do is I save this uh, preset to uh, seaboard 12 semitones. So whenever I have an instrument which only supports up to 12 semitones, I'm just going to use this preset uh, to change my pitch band range. Okay, now let's go to Sound Canvas, which is our multi tremble instrument. Okay, so our Sound Canvas uh, also supports all channels. And I turn MP on. So I have my Sound Canvas parameters here. This is a piano, so let's choose a string instrument. Yeah, let's choose this tremolo. So, one thing that you should s make sure before you start on on a multi tremolo instrument is your output channels. So, you have a multi tremolo instrument, each channel is controlled independently. There isn't a global master input for sound canvas. So therefore, you just have to choose selected output channels, which is all channels in our case. So any global signal that is sent from key stage will be sent to all channels simultaneously. So what, what are the global signals here? First of all, our program change signals. So whenever I change an instrument here, choose another instrument like this. On sound canvas, all the instruments on these channels are just changed to low fi strings. Okay, except channel 10 because uh, channel 10 is actually a sign for drums. So maybe we shouldn't be actually choosing all channels here because we don't we want to skip channel 10. So let's actually choose every channel from 1 to 8. And my output is just a selected output channel. So now I'm controlling the first eight channels on my sound, sound canvas. So for example, if I change the volume here, go to sound canvas, you can see that the volume of the first eight channels are changed and they're controlled uh, simultaneously with these global parameters. Now, I again have to correct the pitch pitch range. And because sound canvas's pitch range is only two semitones. So I have to basically do the same thing. So let me add this 12, 12 semitones preset here. And instead of 12 semitones, I need to do this to f two semitones. And two semitones corresponds to four and minus four. So now it works. Well, I cannot go beyond two semitones because sound canvas doesn't really support it. But I can still use those gestures over sound canvas. Okay, now we have done our basic setups for, for these three types of instruments. Let's do some additional customizations. Let me start with the Synthmaster, our uh, MP instrument an MP compatible instrument. So, uh, suppose that I want to change the functionalities of my three dimensions to control other parameters on Synthmaster. So, the channel pressure, so since this is an MP compatible instrument, we already have, so for this sound, our channel pressure changes the brightness, I think, the brightness of our sound. But let's say I want to change the volume using our vertical slide. Now, uh, let's add a custom translator to do that. Now we have to be careful about something here. 
Okay, control change 74 is our slide parameter. Uh, let's change the volume outputs. Now, it doesn't seem to work. And this is because the volume parameter is not an MP parameter on Sunrise, on Synthmaster. And it's only a global parameter. And you cannot change the volumes of individual nodes on Synthmaster. Synthmaster doesn't allow us to do that because it's not an MP parameter. But you can send these parameters, these vertical slides, to global channel. And this is where this switch comes into place. Send the MP to master channel, the global channel. So now... Okay, you cannot have individual volumes uh, or for each node, but these uh, slide tracking algorithms still also works for uh, signals, those si uh, signals which are mapped to global parameters. So the highest value of these three nodes... Well, okay, I have to need to activate this. ...controls the volume of, of Synthmaster. And just like that, you can also do the same thing with channel pressure. So let's change this to channel pressure. So I can use the three dimensions of my seaboard to control non-MP parameters globally by using this sent to MP master channel. And other MP parameters still works. And what I can do is I, I can just uh, also translate the incoming channel pressure signal. So each channel... the channel pressure is also mapped, and they are mapped uh, as MP signals, so they are independently controlled over each node. So, for monotrimble instruments, you just have to do the same thing, because you have a monotrimble instrument, you don't have MP con control uh, over anything. Let me do this on the, on the track this time. Now, let's create a translator, and suppose I want to control uh, the modulation here. And again, I make sure that I send everything to MP master channel. Well, this instrument doesn't support uh, modulation. Well, this one works. So you can see that the modulation is again controlled by these uh, tracking modes because we are on a monotrimble instrument. So, let's go to sound, sound Canvas, which is a multi tremble instrument. Now, you have full control over all the parameters independently or on a multi tremble instrument. And this is especially good if you have a multi tremble keyboard. So, all everything that I show here also works on a hardware instrument, which is multi tremble So, you can control uh, each channel independently. Uh, So the slide parameter already controls the brightness. So let's increase the brightness globally. And instead, let this parameter control the resonance instead. So let's choose control change 74. And I'm going to choose resonance here. And now you can see that. These are controlled independently, and I don't need to turn the uh, send to MP master channel. Well, if I do that, I again have global control over all nodes. If I turn this off, each node's uh, resonance are controlled independently. So, for m with multi thermal instruments, you have more control compared to MP compatible instruments because you can control every parameter with your custom translators. Okay, now let's create some splittings and layerings with these instruments. 
Well, the layerings and splittings are done in the same way with regular controllers, non-MP controllers. But we have some additional control now. We have another additional slide. This came with a 1.3, the slide range. Uh, the slide range basically allows us to define vertical ranges on our seaboard. So you can manually change these. And you can also just tap and touch anywhere on your surface, on your seaboard, to choose the upper range or lower range. So, so anything above somewhere here is muted. So I, I can just take this here. So these two instruments are layered down here, but up here, I only have control over all the sound canvas. This allows you to do some vertical splittings and can also include the standard note splitting, the range splitting. So you can basically define rectangles over your seaboards for, for each instrument. Now, one thing about multi-trimal instruments is that you can actually use a bunch of channels. So remember, on my sound canvas, I chose my channels from 1 to 8 on this track. So I can create a copy of it. And this time, I'm going to be choosing from 11 to 16. So I'm just using the remaining channels on my sound canvas. And I can do splittings and layering with two sound canvas instruments. So let's see. So I can have this instrument. Let's choose another one. Let's choose a piano. Okay, I want to disable my vertical slide. And also I want to disable the pitch band because I'm playing a piano instrument. So, and uh, let me choose a range for it. And here, let's choose another instrument. And this time it's choir strings. So the vertical parameter controls the brightness and let's say I want to control uh, the pressure to change the resonance or the volume. So let me actually show you one more thing. This relative control also works with the MPE. So I can have an initial volume value here and our pressure basically changes the volume relatively on each note. Well, okay, let's change the range of this as well. So I have my splits and full control over the piano on the lower range. And the upper, uh, on the upper range, I have the string choir with full MP con control over parameters of my sound canvas. Okay, finally I want to talk about how we can control these synthesizers with a regular keyboard together with a seaboard at the same time. One way to do it is just basically assign different tracks, uh, specific tracks for, for my regular keyboard and specific tracks for the seaboard and then just control them separately. This is the easier way. But what if I want to control the same instrument, the same track, both with my seaboard and with my regular keyboard, so the X key error in, in this case. Let's connect our X key air to the same track, the MP track. So I have this uh, channel from one to eight. So it automatically works, but there are some a couple of details that I want to talk about here. This master input channel. So key stage treats every non-MP parameter as global parameter. Control change 74, pitch band, aftertouch, and note signals. So these are MP signals. These are considered as MP signals. And any other signal is automatically considered as a global signal, like this modulation signal, for example. And whenever key stage receives a signal, I mean, a track with MP on, receives a signal other than these MP signals, they're automatically rotated to the global channel, to the master channel here. Uh, we have a regular keyboard sending signals uh, from a single channel like this, which also emits MP signal like pitch band here, uh, we should specify whether it's a global channel or a non-global channel. Our X key air sends signals from channel 1, and suppose that I choose my master input channel as something other than channel 1. So the note signals are still received, but the pitch band signals are, are received from channel 12 
which channel one, which is not my master input channel, Keystray thinks that this is an MPE signal coming from an MPE device like Seaboard, and it receives an pitch band signal with no corresponding notes, and basically dis discards those signals, so they are not routed. To actually eliminate that problem, I have to choose my master input channel to be the same as the output channel of my regular keyboard. So now these pitch band signals are received from this master channel. We don't have any problems with other uh, signals, non-MPE signals, but just for this specific case, make sure that your input channel basically matches with the output channel of your regular keyboard. Okay, so uh, we can control our master keyboard together with the Seaboard. So this basically reserves one channel from this list, takes one channel when, when I play my keyboard, and whenever I start adding additional notes, it basically starts reserving additional channels here. So what if I want to uh, switch between these two on different channels, like suppose XK is also connected to my Synthmaster player. And I want to create a layering where I use my X key to control synth master, but I want to use my C board to control sound canvas here. But on the second section, I want to use my X key to control sound canvas. So here, C board controls here, but this basically sends signals to both sound canvas and synth master player. To eliminate that, I have these active inputs for each part and its default value is all inputs. So for here, I just choose C board, and C board controls sound commas where this only controls uh, my synth master player. And here, both keyboards basically control sound commas. And not only that, you can also do things like uh, multiple parts on a single tr channel and for each part, I can choose different instruments like C board here and X key here. So these are routed to the same channel and I can have different ranges on different parts. For example, I want to assign this part of my C board to control sound canvas. So the rest basically doesn't send any signal. And for my X key, I want to control the upper range. This region doesn't send any signal, and only this region of my seaboard sends signals to sound canvas. And suppose I want to do something like uh, control this slide parameters, or let's say I want to control this uh, horizontal slide to control a parameter on the sound canvas without playing any notes on the seaboard. So suppose on the seaboard I simply choose here my seaboard, I simply muted by you know assigning c minus 2 on the range and i have the full range of my keyboard now the thing is the c board doesn't send any note signals and since those note signals are filtered their corresponding mp signals are also filtered but there is one switch one final switch on the advanced sections of mp here wrote mp signals of filtered notes uh, to master output so all the notes coming from my c board are filtered because of the range limiter. But if I turn this on, the MP signals are routed to the global channel, even if the corresponding notes are filtered. So now, I can basically use the three dimensions to control the sounds without actually playing them on, on the seaboard itself. I can actually even change those signals. Suppose I want to change the pitch band to control volume, and I want to do it relatively. So, Suppose that I have this initial volume. So you see this pitch band now controls the volume without playing any notes. So you can use your C board as an XY controller to change any parameter, even if you're not actually playing on the C board itself.